Hey guys, Odie here. Welcome back to part four of Novena Diabolos. You know what we do? Let's just get right back into it. Retrieving last save point. This might take a moment. Saturday, October 27th. Six days until the selection. You mean when I'm gonna die? Yeah. Six days till you die. I wake up to the sound of my phone receiving a text message. Who could it be so early in the morning? I sit up and scratch my head. I can't think of anyone. Kim? The reporter? Hosek Cho? Maybe my interviewee? I find my cell phone and reach out to grab it. Who the hell is texting me at this hour? Six days until the selection? I spot an all too familiar text message. Shake my head and get up from my bed. Ew, squishy. I step into something soft and mushy. I look down. There's chunky, dripping vomit all over my feet. Is that? <laughs> what? <laughs> the taste of gastric acid makes its way up my throat as I remember yesterday. All the knowledge I was forced inside my head. It's like it's flaring up yet remaining blurry at the same time. I managed to stop vomiting and wash out the nasty taste in my mouth. I'll run across the room and grab my pen and paper and proceed to scribble down all of my scrambled thoughts. Novena Diablos is a nine day long event. Five women, monsters, and a chosen human. Memories flash up in my mind and radically and disappear just as quickly. I can't remember what I was trying to write. I slap myself to concentrate. It doesn't help. Damn it. I put my hands over my head in frustration. I can't remember what I wanted to write down. What the hell is wrong with my memories? It's hard to resist the urge just to dive into the ballpoint pen straight through my brain. I take a deep breath and sort out my thoughts. Okay, calm down. Step by step, one word after another. I continue writing. One of the women is human. On the ninth day, I must leave this village with the human. The words coming out of my mouth are so bizarre, I can't even believe I'm the one who's saying them. This is so obviously stuff from inside my own head. But as I write it, it's like I'm putting someone else's words on paper. It feels truly dreadful. But I do my best to focus in order to unearth the rest of these memories. I keep writing as if possessed. I'm out of breath, gasping for air just like I run a marathon. And silently stare at the paper. Sometimes we wake up from dreams that seem shockingly real, only realize how absurd they are once we actually write them down. That perfectly describes what I'm feeling right now. This is nonsense. Absolute bull. Logically, thinking makes me criticize my own writing. I do my best to cast out the size I type what I just wrote down in my cell phone. Here's the gist of it. I got dragged into a weird ritualistic event called the Novena Diablos. The participants of Novena Diablos are five women and one man. Of which the man will be sacrificed on the ninth day in order to resurrect a great demon ruler. In this particular case, that man is me, Chun Sung Park. And the women are the demonesses. The purpose of Novena Diablos is to make me choose one of them to leave together on the last day. The demoness is chosen by me. Will then sacrifice me and thus be resurrected as the demonic ruler. My participation is supposed to end in certain death. Novena Diablos is a, is a ritual usually rigged, reserved for those in the know. However, one of the five women is participating. Uh, the fact and severely changes the rules of this game, giving me an actual chance of surviving their ordeal. These are the women participating in Novena Diablos. Mina Hyun. How do you know her name? Rin Che. Nari Lee. Sumi Choi. Hana Sehi. Only one of them is an actual real human, and I'll have to figure out who it is and escape together with her. These are the rules. 
One, this place is cut from the outside world until the ritual's conclusion. No get, no one getting in, no one getting out. The women are unable to meet and interfere with one another. They are unaware that there is a human woman among the demonesses. The existence of the real human is only known to me and the witness. But wouldn't they also know? Hmm. The unexpected appearance of a human woman should have ruined this event, which is called Novena Dablos. A glaring error in the devil's plans. But in his wickedness, he seems to have integrated this mishap into the event. As if it's all just a game to him. This is driving me insane. I put my head in my hands and sigh. How the hell did I get involved in all this nonsense? Another text message arrives. That's it. With no signal, this should not be possible, no matter what. Nevertheless, the text just pops up as if nothing's wrong. Which is physical proof that something really weird is going on here. And not that it's just a dream or my mind playing tricks on me. I slowly lift up my phone. I take a deep breath and open the text message that's just arrived. Vampire equals Mina Hyun. Undead equals Rin Che. Fox Spirit equals Hana Sehi. Succubus equals Nari Lee. Which equals Sumi Choi. But witches are human! Ha ha ha. I laugh awkwardly and stare at the text with a blank expression. A game. That's truly what it feels like. Something for the devil's entertainment. I finish up with the things on my phone, time to clean up the vomit on the floor. I agonize over how I should proceed. While figuring out who the monsters are and who's the uninvited guest, it's important to build up trust. All in all, it's a complicated matter. Where do I start? While I'm mulling it over, another text message arrives. I take out my cell phone. Abandoned village. They're taken aback by the message. I realize what it means immediately. According to what I was told, the monsters who are part of this event are connected to some sort of ritual. That ritual must be performed in order to qualify as a demon. Hmm. A sacrifice. In more simple terms, murder. Human offering summons mo the monster through magic, and is killed by the monster to complete the ritual. Seems like this text is telling me where the summoning ritual took place. Come think of it, I started receiving these texts the day I arrived in the village. Looking back at it now, it all becomes clear. Just yesterday, a person died at the location mentioned in the text. Does that mean... Time to think about all this for a moment. These monsters need to have need to have had victims to qualify as demons. That means the event originally would have required five victims. However, if one of them is human, there would only be four victims. If I find monster traces of some kind here, I might be able to figure out which monster did it. By investigating and gather clues at the four murder sites to find the culprits, it should be possible via the process of elimination to single out the single human. Okay. I think I need I think I know what I need to do. My cell phone will serve as, serve as a substitution for an actual camera. I also grab out my pen and notebook and stuff them in my coat pocket. The most important thing is to be well prepared mentally. This isn't about satisfying my journalistic curiosity anymore. That sort of excitement is long gone because of the circumstances. I just want to find a way out of this hellish predicament. I place a hand on my pounding heart and take a deep breath. Okay. I got this. I can do this. I try to stop my hands from shaking. Slap my trembling legs a few times and make my way outside for what feels like an eternity. Hey, bud! At the counter, the motel owner greets me with a big smile on his face. I instinctively stop in my tracks. It's not like he's made a particularly good first impression, but having what I've seen, I'm even more unnerved by his creepy appearance at this time around. Hey there, hard at work today, I see. Yeah. It has to be. I'm certain the motel owner is somehow connected to the demon, devil, or whatever it was I met. It's not just him. None of the villagers will be on my side. But I shouldn't show it openly. I have to make them believe that I'm being deceived. 
You seem busy attending an urgent matter, are you? Um, I guess. Ah, oh, that's right. Coverage for your story? Looks like you're not one to take a break. This is too much for me. I don't know how to react uh, to his mocking tone. I move past him and push the door open to get away quickly. Best of luck with your coverage. I do my best to ignore his words and don't turn back around. Oh boy. I reached the abandoned village mentioned in the text message. People used to live here once. Now all that's left are decrepit, forlorn, abandoned buildings. As I walk, I can hear broken pieces of wall getting stuck under my feet. A sound that soon disappears into the fog, echoing for a moment before fading into quiet nothingness. I can't get it out of my mind. There's still a body somewhere around here. This is pure psychological torture. My hands twitch as the fear seeps into every fiber of my body. Cold sweat covers the entirety of my otherwise dry palms. I take a deep breath. I have no choice but to move forward as if I want to make this all out alive. I start searching the abandoned village. There has to be a body somewhere around here. I can't recall how long or how far I've been walking for. An unpleasant smell suddenly pierces my nose. A musky smell, similar to that of rotten fish. I stop walking. The smell is coming from the abandoned house nearby. I muster up all my courage and push open the creaking door. Alright, here it goes. Oh boy. Ha! Huh. This is the site of the murder. The text message was true. The second murder has taken place. Despite my best efforts to mentally prepare for this in advance, my legs are trembling from fear. How foolish of me to think of this, but I, you'd think I'd be used to this by now, but that's not the case at all. If anything, the thought of this butchery having been caused by an unknown monster makes everything so much worse. Ha ha ha! This is crazy. What the hell happened yesterday? How can the villagers be so indifferent about this? What guarantee is there that I won't end up like this next? What might await me after death if I die here because of the devil's words? Most importantly, why was I chosen to be part of this madness in the first place? What did I do wrong? I was just trying to get the scoop to save my reputation and get back on my feet. Is that so wrong? Can anyone blame me for that? Why can't all those freaking nutcases in that village sort this out between themselves? Let them play their silly game, damn it. Why the hell did it have to be me? I'm out of here. I was never supposed to be here in the first place. All because of that damn car. I should have just waited out and moved straight past that village. God damn it, to hell with this. I never wanted to get involved in any of this. Damn it, damn it all. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn all this crap. Oh jeez, oh god. Phew, whoa, I got this. <laughs> Near the entrance to Hope Hill Village. I'm honestly amazed at my own speed. Having left the village, I feel a sense of relief. I just can't stand there for a while and catch my breath. I recall seeing that scary tree on my first day when I entered this village. Maybe I should have turned back right then and there. I could have just gone back to my car. My own late realization frustrates me. I can't get out of here until this whole farce is over? Who are you kidding, huh? The only rules I'm playing by are my own. I start walking forward with more determination than ever. Whoa, huh. So I make my way through the fog. The more I walk, the more it turns into a tiring, draining experience. Pause for a moment, leaning forward to catch my breath. Suddenly, it's getting harder to breathe, even though I'm only walking. After a while, I stand straight up and continue walking. If I walk just a little further, I should find my car any moment now. Just about over there. What? I freeze. I'm sure that I've been walking straight on. But I suddenly find myself right next to the eerie tree. I rub my eyes and look around. This is really happening. I'm sure of it. Somehow, I've ended right back where I started. What the hell? Maybe I became disoriented and made a turn somewhere without noticing it? Or does this road go around in a circle? I have no clue. Seems I simply circled around this place without noticing it. Once more, I begin to walk. 
This time I look back and see what's behind me every few steps. The road leading to Hope Hill Village is clearly moving away. I'm certain I'm moving straight ahead. Alright, I got it this time. I can feel it. Damn! Still, I end up in front of that tree again. No way. I'm standing there at my wit's end, helpless and confused. I can almost hear the devil laughing at my misfortune. I grit my teeth, turn around, and head off into the fog again. Ha! Ha ha ha! Bull! I start kicking the tree with everything I've got. I kick it. Then I kick it again. And again so hard that I end up slipping and falling down. Crap. My ankle hurts. Phew. Ouch. Alright. I breathe slowly and get back up again. Though it goes against all the rules of common sense. I have to admit all of this, be it demons and monsters and unrealistic stuff, is starting to feel surprisingly real. This devious fog is just the torturous cherry on top, really. Is there nothing I can do, mere mortal human caught in the crossfire? Carefully recall the devil's words. He told me the rules. According to him, me following those rules is the one possible shot I have at surviving this ordeal. In other words, there is no other way. So that's how it's going to be. I turn my head and look at the village with a somber, sullen expression on my face. There's only one way to go about this. I slowly start moving. The more I think things through, the easier moving forward gets. I want to live. I don't want to die like this. So I guess it's pretty clear how I have to proceed. I have wasted my time only to end up right back where I started. But I'm much calmer than I was before. That's because I have come to accept my current situation as reality. That's how it is. There's no avoiding it. I exhale, then my frustration, and take a look around the scene of the murder. I can see things here that weren't at the last crime scene. This is much more than a simple killing. A madman driven by a firm belief in the devil who offered himself up as a sacrifice for one of his monsters. Just a few days ago, I would have thought such madness impossible. My feelings have changed from fear and despair to something different, something closer to anger. Or rather, resignation at this insane situation I've been dragged into. There's no avoiding this. I should make the best of it, but I'm having a hard time figuring out what the best is in this case. I need to approach this in a more rational and simple way. I pull out my cell phone and activate the camera. I can't afford to miss any clues and traces. I need to, well, stay alive. Info menu via right click. Okay. Hmm. All right. Objected accusation means the accused isn't the culprit in the case. Okay. Mustering up all my courage, I approach the scene at the crime with careful steps. All right, guys. Sorry to leave you on that cliffhanger there, but that's it for this episode of Novena Diablos. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are liking the game so far and you guys want to give it a try yourself, Check out the link in the description below. If you guys like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and see ya!